Okay, class. So now that we are familiar with what a compound event is, we are now going to practice an example where the coin actually is not fair. Uh, it says here that suppose that you have an unfair coin where the probability of heads is 0.8 and the probability of tails is 0.2. Um, essentially saying that the probability of heads is 80%, the probability of tails is 20%. Okay, compute the following probabilities. Okay, so we already know that the probability of heads is 0.8. We know that the probability of tails is 0.2. So now if they want you to give me the probability of heads and then tails, this is what we call a compound event. And again, all we have to do, it's really, really simple, is we just have to multiply the two probabilities together. Okay, so this is going to be 0.8 times 0.2 and if you think about it 0.8 times 0.2 it's like 16 except the decimal has to go two more spots backwards it's 0.16 okay now I hope you're starting to realize that uh, it really really doesn't matter about what order you give the probability of the event right in the probability of tails and then heads should ex be the exact same as a probability of heads and then tails. Uh, order does not matter here. So this is going to be probability of tails times probability of heads. Now technically when you're writing the calculation you might write it in a different way but you realize that this has to have the same overall probability. Okay now these two are not the same anymore right in the previous example they were the same because the probability of heads and then tails uh, was well the probability of heads and tails was exactly the same at 0.5 in this case the probability of heads is much more f common and therefore is easier than getting tails 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 because this coin is not exactly fair okay so now I'm gonna write the probability of heads is probability of heads times probability of tails times probability of heads uh, which essentially means that you have to do 0.8 times 0.2 times another 0.8. Now, that's not something I would expect you to do without a calculator. And I'm going to use my calculator and get 0.8 times 0.2 times 0.8. And I get 0.128. Okay, the probability of three tails in a row in this case is going to be extra challenging because t probability of tails already is not easy according to this unfair coin. So this is going to be 0 0.2 times 0 0.2 times 0 0.2 and therefore it is 0 0.008 because I know that 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. Okay, so this is very, very difficult. It's like if something had a 20% chance of occurring what is the probability that this 20% chance of, uh, of occurring event, whatever this event is, it occurs three times in a row? Uh, that's just, it compounds in terms of how difficult it is. Okay. Um, all right, so let's move down to an, you know, a, an example with marbles. Um, find the probabilities of the events that are described below if a marble is drawn and replaced from a bag that contains one red marble and three blue marbles. Okay, so you kind of know that one red marble and three blue marbles. Well, you know that the blue marbles are easier. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and write this. The probability of red, therefore, is one out of four, right, or 0.25. The probability of blue is going to be 3 fourths or 0.75. Now you can see how writing it as a decimal actually could be easier because we will be multiplying anyways and we're, we can use a calculator. So think about this class. If the probability of red is already less than the probability of blue, like we know that the odds are that you probably will pick a blue marble correct? All right, so if that's the case, then what is the probability of you getting a red marble, putting it back in the bag, 
and then getting a red marble again. Now, obviously, you have to put the red marble back in the bag, right? Because if you don't put the red marble back in the bag, the, the new bag will not even have a red marble. So we're assuming that you always put it back. And this is what we call um, returning. Uh, there's a word for it that I, it's, it's off the tip of my tongue right now. Um, but it, I think it starts with R. So anyways, probability of red and then red is just going to be probability of red times the probability of red, which is, uh, in this case, 0.25 times 0.25 which gives me exactly, uh, it's going to, let's see what that is. Point, I think it's 0 0.0625. 0 0.25 times 0.25 gives me 0 0.0625. Now you could also written this as one over 16 um, as a fraction if you want. Okay, I'm gonna actually write it as a fraction. Probability of red and then blue. Well, that's going to be probability of red times the probability of blue, which is one fourth times three fourths, which is three over 16. And then finally, probability of blue and then probability of blue is just multiplying the probability of, of these together. You get three fourths times three fourths and you get nine over 16. So you have a decent chance of getting probability of blue and then blue. You have a decent chance of getting two blues in a row because it's obvious you have more blues in the bag. Okay, so that was, a, that was basically how to calculate compound events class. Obviously there are more opportunities to practice this, uh, but that's really w the bulk of the lesson. Um, now, I, I do want to talk about something very quickly, and it's called what we call a mutually exclusive event. And a mutually exclusive event um, or events are two or more events that cannot occur at the same time. Okay. Um, and one other thing I want to say to class is we've been dealing with and then a lot, but one thing that we cannot forget is the, the word or. Now, what does or mean when you're dealing with probability, right? Uh, a, a quick example I want to give you is remember when we were working with dice or die in this case, one die, and we had one through six, right? So what if I said, what is the probability of getting one or two? Well, what does or mean? Or simply just means that you could add the probabilities together, right? When you say or, it means that you have a better chance. I can get a one or a two to win this game. And that gives me better odds, right? Those of you that have played board games, if you've played Monopoly, for example, and you are next to uh, Park Place and Boardwalk, or um, and you know that, oh, I just need to get a 5 or a 7, right? And something like that. Well, you know that the probabilities are a little bit higher because or means that you can add the probabilities, okay? So this is going to give me... One third. One six plus one six gives me two six, which gives me one third. So just remember, class, that or just means that you add the probabilities. Add the probabilities. Okay, this is all review from module one. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and. Um, Let's go down to uh, number 15, and it says, find the probabilities of the events that are described in the cards below. What's the probability that I get an odd number or gray? Now, I don't know if you guys can see this very, very clearly, but this is a gray card, gray card, gray card, and a gray card. Okay, 
Now, sometimes when they overlap, you just want to make sure that you don't count them twice uh, because you that, that would be overcounting. But fortunately for us, the gray cards are also even. So I have four ways to get gray cards, which is four out of 12. And then I, the odd numbers are uh, six out of 12, right? Because we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So odd numbers are six out of 12. Gray numbers are four out of 12. And the fact that it says or means we add. So six out of 12 plus four out of 12 is going to give me 10 out of 12, which then gives me five six. I have a very, very high chance. Basically, class, I have a very, very high chance to get an odd number or a gray card. The only ways I don't win this game in this, in this event is if I get the number four and I get the number 10 because neither of them are uh, odd or gray. Okay, let's, let's keep going. What's the probability of a black card or a number smaller than three? Okay, so we have two black cards right here and that's gonna be two out of 12. And then, or a number smaller than three. Well, a number smaller than three is one, two, so that's another two out of 12. And the probability of getting a black card or a number smaller than three is four out of 12, which gives me one third. Okay, pretty easy, right? And then black or white, we can just go ahead and say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, oh, sorry, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are eight total black and uh, black or white cards. So this gives me two thirds. Or just means to add. Okay, that's enough practice. Your homework today, your homework for this week is going to be the 7.1a homework number seven through 14. So not too bad. Hopefully this was review for you and um, hopefully you enjoy probability. I remember in the first module, it was a little bit challenging, but now it's starting to feel a lot easier, right? All right, class, that's the end of our lesson today. Thanks for watching.